Hello, welcome to Chrissy Crafts. I'm Chrissy. Come and see what's on my hook and needles, what's in my hoop, and what's happening at home. Hello and welcome everyone. A warm welcome if you're a new viewer and a big hug if you're a returning viewer. Welcome back. So I'm kicking it off today with a big ta-da. This is the Breath of Air cardigan by Ditsy Pips hooked up in Hillview Farm yarns in the, it's the Dabbler yarn in the shadow colorway. I think the kind of washed out variegation of it really brings out the texture of the cardigan. The details are so amazing. I love the color is worked so that it curls under. I really like how that sits like that and the edges it was worked um, in a big rectangle, so back and forth in a big rectangle, leaving gaps for the sleeves, and then you just hook the sleeves and then inset them, and there you go. I loved it. It flew off the hook because I started this. I got this yarn and the pattern at Unravel in February, and it is March 25th. It's Saturday, so then it's like a month later. Boom! I never do anything this quickly unless it's like pressure for a gift for somebody. So I'm really psyched that I got this finished. I love it. It's so wearable. The only problem I had with this pattern was that, I mean, the major problem I had with the pattern is very easy to hook up. It goes really quickly, but I ran out of yarn. Um, it's... When I was at Unravel, I was looking at the pattern and the sizing, and for my size, it said I needed something like 700 something grams of yarn. So two skeins. And so, because one 100 gram skein has 400 meters. So I was hooking and it was going okay. And the first sleeve went fine after I finished the body. In the second sleeve, I noticed the skein was getting smaller, but I kept going along. But by the time I got to the shoulder shaping bit, I was I was out of yarn. I got the shoulder shaping bit has after you do the pattern, there's four rows of the next pattern for shaping, and I got through two out of yarn. I thought, well, how can that happen? Because I'm a tight crochet and I had gauge and everything. So I looked at the pattern again, and underneath where it said the yarn weight, was it the weight? No, the yarn meterage requirements was 700 something. It said yarn weight in grams, 235 or something like that, more than 200. So instead of two 100 gram skeins, I actually needed two and a little bit more, even though a 100 gram skein of yarn reportedly has 400 meters in it. So I don't know what happened there, but it was weird. But, um, so I got angry for a minute, but I didn't, my naughty corner of crochet is already full up. So I thought I'm going to, I'm going to sort this one out. Cause actually it wasn't that tricky to fix because I had four rows of the shoulder shaping, two rows of the shoulder shaping. So I took away one row and put it on here. So both shoulders now have three rows of shoulder shaping, which I have little shoulders, so I'm not so bothered in it. You know, I haven't even blocked these sleeves so they could go a lot longer if I want them to, but it didn't. So it was fine. But it did mean that when it came to sewing them in, I got some um, darning thread. Like it's a bit of, for mending socks. It's like a thick, thick thread or a kind of a thin wool in a dark gray. I'm not going to show you close up because I don't want you noticing it, but I don't really notice it. So I got through it fine. And that was that was an easy fix, but it was peculiar to me. Has anybody else ever come across that where the weight and the meterage kind of don't make sense together? I've learned a lesson there though. I'll read the weight and the meterage when I get a pattern. So I make sure I have enough yarn because that could have been a lot worse and I would have been really grumpy then. But enough of my whinging about it. Look, it is lovely and I'm really, really happy with it. Ta-da! So now that that's off the hook, what is on the hook now? I have in my head, I have it that this big long line of whips that are ancient, I'm going to kind of work on one 
during the year like every time I finish something new I'll pick up an old whip I'm not going to show you but I'm going to pick up an old whip and get to work on that one but along with that I still have to try some new things too so so I have a friend who wanted to make a pair of the Conquer Time mittens from the Crochet Project's uh, Accessories Project Book 1. I made a pair of these in green for a friend for Christmas and they're really easy, really fast and very beautiful. And so I met up with my friend so I could show her how to get started on them. And I thought oh, I'll bring along some yarn and just show her. And I ended up making the mitten. <laughs> I started making it and I loved it so much that I thought, okay, I haven't finished it off or anything yet, but I love this. It's Eden Cottage Yarn, the Pendle 4 ply, and this color is Heliotrope. Look at that, a piece of paper. And I started off just showing her how to do it and I just... When it was here when I started with the cuff and I started seeing what the yarn was doing and how it was looking. I thought, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Oh, I'll just do the first round of the lacy, but just to show her how to do it, you know, just to get her on her way and make sure. I thought, I'll do another row just to make sure she really knows how to read the pattern. I'd better show her how to do the thumb because that might trip her up. And then one's made, so. So my friends enable me to do more patterns and more projects. So now I'll make the second one and I've got a nice little set of mitts. But it's actually good because I really want to make that hat. And I have enough. I have two skeins of this yarn. And so I have enough to make the hat as well. So I don't know if my friend's going to make the hat, but I got her started on the mitts and there's a whole nother whip. I have a couple projects I'm making, but they're gifts, so I can't show you this time. So I'll show you. Well, when I can show you after I've, after I've given them. But... I didn't get to go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but I did pre-order the next crochet project because I am their biggest fan and groupie. The Shawl Project Book 4. This one is for gradient cakes. You know, those yarn cakes, the ombre ones are the gradient cakes that change color. And they are gorgeous. Look at those. So it was literally eeny meeny money mo which one do i make first because i love all of them and the cover star one and this is by joanne scrace it is parallel lines and so on friday which was yesterday i have my weekly knitting and crochet club i go to not the one i run in my village but this is one i just go to and meet up with a bunch of friends and it's right near my local yarn shop and so I just had to pop in and buy this this is Rico creative cotton again I'll put all the details in the show notes below it was I mean I was spoiled for choice because all the colors in this series are beautiful there's a really gorgeous pink one that I was this close to getting but I thought actually let's I'm very like muted I'm maybe I'm on a roll with this this is like a new thing this is a new theme all about the neutrals it's not new because I always love neutrals but it's not pink anyway I didn't want anything too bright and crazy uh the pinks I thought no not yet and this one was just so pretty and tonal and beautiful that I had to get that one to see what it does in this beautiful pattern um it, it's a light cotton thready I don't know how many strands are there I can't see enough to count but it'll hook up quite beautifully beautifully I think I'm not supposed to start anything till I finish one of these whips but I just I did the starting chain of I did the starting chain because I just wanted to say I've started this project so I have more than a hundred little chains there and I have the cake and we'll just see how long I can stay away from that oh it's so pretty and I think it'd be really nice for summer because it's nice and light the cotton is light the colors are light and then Rico does have and, and Fiona had at the shop the pins and needles and gray shot she had kind of the wintry version of it this woolier it's a bit fatter cake it's a bit thicker and warmer and snugglier 
but I'm being very optimistic and hopeful and hoping that we are on our way towards summer at some point this year, even though snow keeps dumping on England, which is very funny, but I won't talk about the weather. Oh, there's that hook. I was wondering where that went. I was keeping my Breath of Air cardigan in my happy bag from Jules. It's so sweet violet, but now my shawl is going to live in this bag. Let's move on to what's on my needles. I am so excited to show you this. I'm so excited living in my Jules rainbow bag. my sock don't look too close because there are some glitches in it i was so excited i'm knitting the colors are changing i'm knitting on circular needles i did the magic loop the pattern deviates a little bit because my attention span deviates a little bit sometimes and I can't seem to always be able to count to six and then purl two and count to six again knitting. But that's okay. I'm getting there. What I'm happy about is the fact that these are all even and, and the cuff is even and there are... It worked. I'm just happy it worked. And actually it's working and you can see that this is knitted and it's a sock. I frogged it like four times at least after the last time I showed you when I'd started the little bit of sock. Mainly because I didn't know how to not frog it. I didn't know how I don't I didn't know how to fix something when I got when I made a mistake and I saw it. I didn't know how to go back, so I just ripped the whole thing out and start again. And then I, after a while, I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm never going to get anywhere. So I had to make myself learn how to go back a few stitches without dropping everything. So I did that. The nice thing is I did drop a stitch and get properly stuck with how that happened. I had made a mistake, I went back to fix it, and then I dropped a stitch while I was trying to fix it, and I'd just gotten a bit of a muddle. But because I was getting together with my knitting and crochet club on Friday, I just took it to my lovely friends there, and they sorted me out straight away. My friend Nicola just kind of took it and went, -lul -lul -lul. she slowed down so I could watch it, but she did go, -lul -lul, and then it was, it was all fixed and off I went again. So that was great. So now I know how to fix it, but I, I just, it was taking so long to try to sort it out. So she helped me. So thank you, Nicola. And thank you to knitting and crochet clubs out there, because I think this is how everyone gets better at their craft by being able to share and help each other out when they're in a pickle. So this is so addictive. I can't stop myself. I'm loving it. The other fantastic thing I learned, I went, this is a bit of a story to tell you how I learned this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Last weekend, because I couldn't go to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, I went up to London and met some lovely knitty friends up there, and we went to Wild and Woolly in London. Lovely Anna had her shop open for a I'm not going to EYF party, which was so fun. There was loads of tea, tons of cookies, and loads of people just crammed into this gorgeous shop and sitting around chatting and knitting and crocheting. Oh, we had such a good time. And in the midst of all of that, um, one of my, because I was so psyched, I was showing off my sock to all the knitters who have knitted tons of socks and tons of jumpers and everything. I felt like such a newbie, but they were so encouraging and so nice. And my friend Caroline of Seaside Girl Knits noticed I was knitting these with um, I think they were bamboo needles because that's what I had or that's what I bought because that's what all they had in the shop when I was buying them. She said, you know, it's sticking a bit because this is wooly wool. This is Stylecraft, head over heels, details below. Um, and she said, sticking a bit. If you have metal needles, they'll be much smoother. Well, I don't know. I don't know one thing from the other because I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. So I said, all right, and luckily, Wild and Woolly had a lovely selection of needles of all sorts of materials, including these gorgeous silver ones. I don't know what they are. Addy, I think. 
I'll find out and I'll put the details below or like on the screen or something. I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, so she helped me transfer the socks to these needles and oh my God, they're like, Woo oh my gosh, they're so smooth and so sleek and so fast. Oh, it was a joy. I'm like, oh, it's like silky knitting. It's gorgeous. So I've like, you know, doubled my speed from snail slow to hungry turtle slow. I don't know. I'm still slow, but it just is so much smoother. What a difference. Who knew? And at the same time, I said, well, this is great, but I wouldn't want to knit silk on these needles because they would like just fly and fly across the room. So I could see where you would want wooden needles or bamboo needles to kind of be able to hold on to slippery material. But with things like this um, more catchy wool socky stuff, you know, I'm talking the talk, aren't I? I know all the words and all the lingo. Anyway, these work really well with this. That's my tip. That's my knowledge. I kind of want to sit here and hold this like this the whole time because I'm so chuffed with myself that I'm learning to knit. But I have other things to show you. It is making me very excited to go back to my match and move shawl, which I started, I don't know when. I bought this yarn last year at Unravel. These two colors, again, Hillview Farm. And I started knitting, learning to knit here, and it was getting better and better. A few things, a few mistakes here and there, but it's more of how to learn to learn my tension, learn changing colors, learn how to be patient when you have a gazillion stitches. You have to do knit stitch with over and over and over. It's a garter stitch. But I've gone, to, whoop, whoop. I've got to the point where I turned the corner. I don't know if I've shown you this already. It's been a while. I turned the corner on this bit and this bit keeps growing. So it's kind of asymmetrical. But now I'm really keen to get back into this one because I just feel much more confident now. I did drop a stitch at one point. I have Jules' lovely rainbow stitch marker on there. So I didn't know, I didn't know what to do then. So I just put a little stitch marker there so it won't fall apart and I'll figure that out or ask my knitting and crochet club to help me with that at some point, but I'll keep going. And especially, um, these are really lovely bright summery colors and that's why I bought the yarn last year. And so I'm really keen to get this going again so I might be able to actually wear it this summer. Gosh, I finish one thing and I just think I can do everything. I think I can conquer the world. I'm going to finish every whip within a month. Don't hold your breath, anybody. But at least I'm like, got my mojo for all the craft. I got a souvenir from Wild and Woolly, by the way. I didn't go to Edinburgh Yarn Festival and I'd just come back from Unravel. So I do have loads of yarn, but I couldn't leave Wild and Woolly and the I'm not going to EYF party without getting at least one gorgeous thing. I got my needles, but I also got this. Ah, oh, isn't that just springtime in a ball of yarn? This is Schoppel. Zauberball. I don't know if my pronunciation is right. I just like saying it with gusto. I just think it looks like spring tulips. Aren't they just, tulips are my favorite flower and these just look like spring tulips. It just made me really happy, especially because when we were sitting in Wild and Woolly in London, it was snowing out and snowing harder and harder. And I was starting to think, am I going to be stuck in London overnight? Not really a bad thing. Unfortunately, it didn't snow so hard that my train was canceled. So I did make it home, which is fine. We would do a lock-in at a yarn shop. Wouldn't that be great? Stranded. Anyway, off on a tangent again. So I think I'm going to make more socks with this because I'm enjoying making socks and it's fun. And I just want to see what happens with this. That's it for the yarny stuff this week. Let's move on to what's in my hoop. So the stitch along is going to be finishing up this week. Oh, I can't believe it. I've been doing it really slowly half on purpose because I want everyone to just take their time and really enjoy it, half because that's just what life is throwing at me. I couldn't do it any faster. So here's where I am with the good intention stitch along. We have done the French knots. Where are my dots? And 
and now this next video is going to be the next tutorial I have will be how you finish your work I have the original one I did that first gave me the idea to do a stitch along and I purposely haven't finished it because I want a video how I finish this so this is the original one the slow down which I need to pay more attention to I'm really whizzing about so the next video will be what I do with the hoop I, assuming that I'm going to put this make hoop art out of this <clears throat> and so I'm going to show everyone how I secure all the fabric how I finish the back to make it nice and neat different things you could do with the hoop and then how I hang it up I'll do it to this one and to the go outside I think I'm gonna add a little bit more to this though I'm not sure yet <clears throat> I have a few tips for the stitches who are joining in with this and by the way it's not too late to join in you can still stitch along go back it's, it doesn't take very long at all go back to the beginning videos in my um, on my channel you could see all the tutorials go to the beginning and just whiz through them and, and do some stitching or is I going with that <clears throat> anyway one of the tips I give is to if you're not sure if you're finished with it or not walk away from it and wait a couple hours wait overnight wait a couple days and then come back and look at it and when I did that today I just think I want a little bit more green right up here I mean it's really picky stuff but it, it will this is what makes it satisfying to be able to tweak if you don't like something snip it out now's the time to do the finishing touches and then we'll do the backing and everything I'm pleased to announce that I have some prizes which when I first started this stitch along I didn't think anybody would join in anyway so I hadn't planned it to be a proper stitch along with prizes and things like that but actually I've, I'm so excited because lots of people are stitching and I've been getting tagged with the hashtag good intentions Sal and it's just really nice to see all the different words people are choosing and how people are learning and enjoying learning different stitches it really made me really happy and then I thought actually when this is all over I want to show off some of them here and on Instagram I want to choose some of my favorites or maybe just all of them in a little montage because it's really fun um, seeing how different these stitches can look with different colors and different words and different fabrics and how uh, adaptable it is to your taste and your intention so this coming Friday the 30th of April will be the last day of the stitch along and at that point I will and I'll remind everybody of this on Instagram but I will ask people to tag their finished uh, their finished hoop it doesn't even have to be backed really I'm just but on Friday I'm gonna ask everybody to tag their hoop and where they are with it and just because they're joining in and then what I'll do is go through all the tags that I can find and I will write everybody's names down put them in a hat choose some names and there will be a few little prizes the first one from Cloudcraft is a miniature embroidery hoop kit so this is to make a little necklace I have one of these and I love it you get on the back it's a little kit that has the tiny hoop and a little chain so you can have a necklace to hang around your neck I love these Cloudcraft is fantastic for embroidery needs by the way another prize that I'm really thrilled and excited to be sharing is a copy of mandalas to embroider this is my friend Karina's book that um, her publisher search press sent me a copy to give away to one lucky stitcher thank you search press this is awesome this is so awesome because I'm definitely gonna start stitching these once my hoops done I have a lot of ideas for all these little hoops and cushions and things this is the one I showed you I mean look at these hello Karina this is the one where I helped her out a little bit and did one of the mandalas I did that that cushion I think I showed the cushion yeah I did one of my past episodes so I've been following along with her prog progress as she was making this book and all the mandalas are amazing I mean look how pretty anyway so one lucky winner will get this book and then you could start another project another stitching project I have a quick tip for when you're stitching in different colors 
as you're building things up on your hoop. Sometimes when you're working on pieces that have lots of little flowers and little bits here and there and you're really not sure how much you want of it, it could be really annoying to thread your needle with the pale pink, do a couple and then snip it and then thread it with a darker pink and make a couple things and think, oh gosh, I really wish I had some more pink right there. And you have to thread your needle again with the pink and it can just be a bit faffy. So what I do is I thread a few needles. I learned this tip from someone along the way and it's genius. Thread a couple needles with all the different colors you're using and that way you can just pick it up and go and stitch and then leave it hanging off the side if you want. So when you're finished with this section here, but you still have thread left, put your needle through just so the thread's hanging there and then keep stitching with other colors. That way, if you think, oh gosh, actually, I want another darker rose right there. The thread's right there. Just get the needle back through and keep stitching. It sounds really, it sounds sillier than it is. In practice, it's just brilliant. It just saves time finding more thread and finding a needle and threading needles, which could be... I have certain days where threading needles are like really easy and other days where I swear I'm blind. I just can't make it work for nothing. <sighs> I'll announce the winners on Instagram and I'll probably pop a little quick video in here at some point next weekend to tell you the winners of the stitch along there as well and to share some photos with everyone. So what's happening at home? This month's Crochet Club had one of my favorite cookies that I make. It's Martha Stewart's Oatmeal Raisin Cookies. I'll put the link down below. It makes a ton of cookies. They freeze really well, and they're great for lunch boxes. They're great for kids. They're great for grown-ups, and they're just really delicious. I have a book that I'm going to start reading. Easter holidays are coming up. Book of Dust. I caved and bought the hardback, the thick copy. And I was going to read this sooner. I did get this, like... I think Christmas time or in the new year, but my husband took it and he started reading. I'm like, hang on a minute, that was my book, but he nabbed it before me, so it's my turn to read it. I absolutely love the Northern Lights trilogy. When I read that, it just was amazing, amazing concept. Uh, and I love the name Lyra. My eldest daughter, Ella, was nearly a Lyra because of that book. Oh, loved it. So if you've read this, don't tell me about it. Just tell me if you liked it below. I like quirky books and I like weird books. I've been debating whether in the what's happening at home section if I talk about what I like reading because it's not to everyone's taste. Like The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood is one of my top books ever. Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell just blew me away. I absolutely loved it, but I've met one person who loved it as much as I did. A lot of people found it too, too weird or too heavy, but I loved it. So. So yeah, I like quirky books. So I, m I might, I might talk about them every now and again, but I don't want people to think I'm too weird or too unengageable. But I, the next thing is we watched Tellywise. We saw on Netflix the movie Annihilation popped up and we didn't expect it to be popping up in Netflix. We thought it would be popping up in the cinema, but it went straight to Netflix after being in the cinemas in America, which partly is a shame because when we watched it, it is cinematically amazing. I would have loved to seen it on the big screen. It is just a visual. It's just so beautifully shot. I just want to see it on a giant screen and very atmospheric. I won't tell you anything about it, but I loved it. I just thought it was an amazing concept, an amazing story. Natalie Portman was incredible. Oh, I loved everything about it. We just, I want to see it again. So that's a really good one to watch. It's kind of smart person sci-fi kind of thing, like Arrival with Amy Adams, that one. It's just really, it was a real thinker. Annihilation was similar. It it's, has its moments of creepiness and stuff, but it's also a real thinking movie. It makes you, afterwards, my husband and I were just chatting about it for a couple of days after. It's like, oh, well, what about this? What about that? And I love films like that that just make you get your brain going. I don't like questions always being answered. I like open endings and things. It just makes you think. I love it. And then on telly, we found, I think on Netflix as well. Thank God for Netflix. The Good Place. 
somebody recommended that to us and oh my gosh, it is so funny. You have to watch a couple episodes. It is very funny. One of those ones that when it started, I thought it was going to be a lot ditzier than it was. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's like a comedy, but again, it makes you think and it's quite clever. It, it's not too pandering to the masses. So it's not too stupid or going for the stupid humor all the time. It's really light, but really fun and very engaging. Absolutely loving it. And it's one that we can watch with Ella, our teenager, because it's, uh, it's just fun. It's good fun. So that's one I'd recommend as well. I think I'll leave it at that right now, because I'm not sure if this is the kind of thing anybody wants to hear me rambling on about or not. So if everything I've said completely doesn't appeal to you, nicely tell me. Just stick to the yarn and the stitching, Chrissy, please. And some cookie recipes. All right, I'm itching to get back to those socks. So I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you very much for visiting with me today and listening to me wax lyrical about all things yarny and crafty and thready and... I haven't eaten for a couple hours and I think it's starting to show so I'm going to have a spot of lunch. Have a great weekend, have a great week, and I'll see you again soon with prizes for the stitch along. Bye! <laughs>